and while they're at the magistrate, they're checked again through the system, and then they're actually arrested, taken to the jail, and then they're checked a third time? Or is that first initial check enough to waive the other Well, contracts? you know, what, from a practical standpoint, how, how it will work is if the person is going to jail and our officers, if the person is arrested and the officer determines that they're here unlawfully, or it appears that they're here unlawfully and they're going to the jail, we'll have a handoff to the jail, and the jail will do the detailed follow-up of that. So some of those checks will be waived because they're just going straight will be the waived, jail. but they'll be, they'll be we, ha we need to coordinate with the jail so we don't duplicate in those cases where people are going to jail. But my, uh, a point that needs to be made is there are almost half of the people that we physically arrest do not go to jail. Because they're released on recognizance, they're released on bond, or, or uh, whatever. Or the, in some cases, the magistrate uh, makes some other decisions on it. But they don't wind up in jail, so unless the police check them, they wouldn't be checked. And according to the, the guidelines that um, Chairman Stewart handed out this morning, is it, has the bar now been lowered that an officer just needs reasonable suspicion to check? No, them? it's the same. That's okay. the same. Um, can you explain support. the difference? Because the chairman was pretty clear that the bar has been, I mean, I, he said the bar's been lowered. Pro he says the probable cause, is that there can be a standard that officers may investigate immigration status based on reasonable sure. su suspicion, for instance, even in a case where there is not an arrest or detention. Um, what's your interpretation of that? Do you agree with him that this is a significant Change. I see you pointing out another significant change. He believes this is the biggest change. Well, make sure we understand what we're talking about now. We're talking about the, the significant changes that were made have to do, the most significant change that was made had to do with at the stage, the stage at which the, the officers are mandated to make the immigration status check. Initially, that was at the detention plus, detention for state or lo local violation, plus reason, probable cause to believe the individual is in the country unlawfully. That has changed to be that mandatory or that requirement has changed to the phase of when someone is taken into physical custody. It, under both scenarios, if, uh, if officers had within some parameters of the law, the officers are investigating have a legitimate interest to investigate someone for a violation of state or local law, or have them uh, as a suspect, as, as somebody being next to the, uh, a scene of a burglary at 2 o'clock in the morning, if officers, uh, officers do have the authority to inquire about immigration status or whether the person is wanted on a warrant or whatever, under those circumstances. Chairman Stewart has said that under item C in the amended general order, using a reasonable suspicion standard, that if you had a group of people loitering, or if you had somebody pulled over for speeding, an officer may initiate a citizenship check. Is that a correct I'm, interpretation? I'm not in, in a position, and I'm not going to do a lot of hypotheticals. What I will share with you is an example of what this means. What this means uh, as to officers having the authority prior to arrest, to inquire about someone's immigration status according to law and good police practices. An example of that would be if an officer stops someone under any circumstances for a traffic violation or whatever the circumstances are, and that officer has reason to believe that the individual, that the individual has given him a false name or there's a question about the individual's identity, a legitimate question about the person's identity, um, that officer is authorized to and would be expected to, would be likely to, let me say it that way. He's not mandated to, but he would be likely to in, do an immigration inquiry if there's reason to believe the person was not here lawfully. And it would, the officer would be likely to uh, do whatever every, other checks he could do to get the person's true identity. So that's that's the most scenario I want to get to. Of course, but will, that I can't, that, will that in itself be likely to create more circumstances for checks too? Well, we we do that now. Chief, it, it sounds like the uh, the officer on the street gets more discretion under the change of policy. Is that a correct interpretation? 
he has no discretion with regard to when someone is, has been arrested. If someone is arrested, previously, uh, you understand, yes, very, very hold on a minute, hold, hold on, hold on. Previously, an officer needed to have a violation of state or local law plus probable cause to believe the individual's here illegally. That's kind of a two-pronged test. Today, the, the standard is if someone is arrested, physically arrested, taken into custody, regardless of any circumstances, their immigration status is going to be checked. All right, you can see the confusion in this room and apparently on the floor. Uh, right well, I, the don't, as well. I don't I think there's any you, real confusion. I want to ask you, how's it playing on, in the streets with your officers? How are they? I think officers about? will see that, that that's a bright line. I mean, it's a real, real simple rule. If someone's arrested, they will be, uh, their immigration status will be checked. And they will be coordinating with the jail. You know, the jail has a similar uh, understanding of what's uh, of their role. They they are going to be checking the immigration status of everybody that winds up there. So I think that's a pretty bright line. The issue of doing good police work and that resulting in an immigra immigration inquiry is um, depending on the, the, the circumstances. But it's not something that we can... There's no mandate there. There's no guarantee that officers in any specific circumstances prior to arrest, there's no mandate that an individual the officer in an individual circumstances uh, will check the immigration staff. However, there is discretion there. The chairman used, um, the chairman addressed the example of men hanging out outside 7-Eleven. Uh, will officers now be checking into people who are just hanging around? No more than they would in fact. Okay. And also, um, can we go back to where he was talking about the lower standard? Are, are you saying the chairman's wrong about there now being a lower standard? I'm not commenting on what the chairman said or didn't say. <laughs> but isn't this your guideline? Is it that the reasonable suspicion refers to the crime separate from legal immigration and that the, is that the difference? He had presented it as reasonable suspicion is for the immigration charge. But what I understood from your presentation earlier, do you mean that reasonable suspicion refers to the local or state crime?